I'm Sir Tap Tap, and this time we're going to talk about recreation areas, which is what the game calls these areas. Breezy Hollow, Lost Lure Creek, Sunburst Island, and Saltwater Shores. Uh, if you need collected items, which is what the game calls things like fruits and bugs and stuff, um, you go to these places. Every time an animal has a request, what they're going to ask for is one to three different items from a specific set. Um, that set can be either seashells, fruits, uh, freshwater fish, saltwater fish, or bugs. It'll never be multiple different things from different categories, um, but it can be up to three of each different item. Um, they can also ask for certain rare items. I'll talk about what a rare item is in a bit. But yeah, basically every three hours, the people visiting at each recreation area will change. That's what that moving in timer is. That means that after two hours and 54 minutes, these four animals are going to move from here. And um, then I'll get four new animals that have different requests. So this guy wants some seashells and, you know, we'll get some materials here. Um, the materials you get are not random. Um, so Bew, I think, gives steel, if I'm correct. Oh, and this is an event. Uh, there's a random chance when you complete a request that you'll do a little event like this, and you'll get three extra materials for that. Uh, it's just kind of an extra bonus that happens sometimes, yeah. So this guy gives steel as his preferred material, I call it. You might get one random non-preferred material, like we got wood here, but generally when you want steel, you'll go to view or one of the other steel ones. Uh, steel is the most common material, by the way, I think. Uh, 14 characters give it. Uh, so now he wants a pair, so... If you want fruit, this is the best place to come, uh, Breezy Hollow. This has one of each different kind of fruit. So unlike normal Animal Crossing, you don't um, you don't have a single kind of fruit, but it is a little bit closer to normal Animal Crossing than you might think, which I'll cover when we get to Lost Little Creek. But yeah, the normal five kinds of fruit are all here. Um, so yeah, we have we have the thing now, and every third request has a small chance. Well, not small, but it has a chance of requesting a rare. Um, either fish or a bug. So the horned dynastid, the black bass, and the red snapper are the rare fish they might request. There's also ultra rare fish and bugs that are super, like, a lot rarer, and um, they'll never request those, so it's safe to sell those. Like if you get uh, tuna, let me see if I have my enemy in my inventory. I probably don't. Um, yeah, so the rare things can sell for 100. And um, you generally want to keep at least five of those on hand. They, they tend to be pretty easy to get. But um, to finish up talking about fruit, let me go to Lost Lure Creek. See, so, yeah, I try to keep five of the rare things. They're pretty common, actually, despite being called rare. But the super rare things are very rare. And um, you'll want to sell those immediately because they have no function other than being sold for bells. Um, there's no museum in this game. There's no uh, collection book. There's no. There's. You can't even put fish in your house or your camper, rather, which is a shame. So um, collecting fruit is pretty easy. Obviously, you just tap and then you get things. Uh, a nice little tip is you can just leave the fruit on the ground and it will not spoil. Um, you can't harvest twice in a row, but if you have too many items, you can just leave the fruit on the ground if you don't immediately need it. So that's a nice little tip. Lost Lure Creek will have two random fruits. Um, tied to your account, so like I get apples and cherries, you might get peaches and oranges. So there's two fruits that you always have more of, and so that's really good for the market box. Though people don't really seem to buy from market box very much. I recommend selling everything at the minimum price in the market box, because the minimum price is still double what the game will give you, but um, the market box isn't very visible and lots of people don't buy it. I have the maximum amount of friends and I still get maybe like three market box purchases a day. It kind of sucks. So Lost Lure Creek, fish are a bit more complicated than fruit. Fruit are completely predictable. Um, you can see the respawn timer. Fish, like maybe every three minutes a fish respawns and there's like a certain cap in the amount of fish that'll be here. Lost Lure Creek is nice because the three common kinds of fish all have the same, they have distinct sizes. So I can tell you right there, that's a small shadow. That's a Crucian carp. That's a tiny shadow, so that is a pale chub. Wait, no, pale chub's a little smaller than that one, actually. That's a, that's a crucian carp. Excuse me. Um, and then there's a little bit larger one that's a yellow perch. I wish they would be a bit more distinct. That, no, it's all crucian carps. Oh, here we go. That's a yellow perch. So smaller than the crucian carp is the... Uh, 
Whoa, that was a little glitchy. Um, so yeah, that's what a yellow perch is, lo looks like. If it's bigger than a yellow perch, it's a rare fish. So if you see a large fish in this area, always catch it, always. It'll either be a sea bass, a koi, or a uh, rainbow trout. And um, rainbow trout and koi sell for a lot of bells. And the black bass is just uh, one of those rare request items. They'll only ever request a single rare item. So uh, that's why you only need five. Like I said, they're fairly easy to get. The only one that's moderately hard to get is the red snapper. Uh, like I said, all the fish have distinct sizes in Lost River Creek, so they're really easy to keep track of. You'll always know whether you're getting one of the normal fish or a rare one. Now, if we move over into Saltwater Shores, this is where you get your, your saltwater fish, which you might have guessed. This, uh, this is a little bit more ambiguous. You can tell the sizes of all the different common fish, just like Lost River Creek. But the rare fish share sizes with the common fish, so it's going to be a lot harder to tell when you get some of the rare ones. This is a really long load for some reason. Uh, the, the servers are kind of having some issues because a lot of people are playing at once. But uh, that hasn't been too bad. You can also find uh, coconuts both in... Uh, what is this thing? Sunburst Island and Saltwater Shores. Um, coconuts are very common and never waste your fertilizer on coconuts. And um, if you need to sell something for space, coconuts are usually a very safe bet. Um, so that, that is a squid. Squids are medium size. Um, halibut, I think, are, or flounders, olive flounders are, um, are the large sized ones. And the small ones here are horse mackerels. So you can always remember that though. And an annoying thing is, like I said, the red snapper is roughly medium sized as well. So this could be a red snapper, this could be another squid. And the football fish I think is another medium or maybe it's a large. Um, and then there's also blowfish, which is another medium or large, I forget which one. This is a large fish, by the way. That is probably an olive flounder. Um, there can also be tuna here. Tuna are extra large. Tuna are very obvious because they're the biggest fish in the game. So if you see a tuna, you'll know. Which is fortunate because they're very expensive. Um, you can also find coral and seashells on the beach here. You don't need to stock up too much on these. Um, seashells are very rarely asked for. I kind of like when they're asked because they're not... They're, um, they're really easy to get. And I only tend to keep maybe three to six of each of these of the seashells. There's only three seashells, and you get those all here. Um, and that's pretty much saltwater shores for you. Also, um, once every day, just like in regular Animal Crossing, one random tree will have a certain amount of bells in it. 300 to 1,000 uh, bells will come out of the tree. Uh, I already got it today, so I can't show you exactly, but just shake every tree that does not have fruit, and eventually you'll find it. Oh, great. <laughs> not while I'm doing a video, dude! Please. Um, hopefully I get into Sunburst Island. I only have one more thing to show. Um, but yeah, Sunburst Island is where you find your bugs. You can also get coconuts here. Um, the bugs you can see unlike the fish. So bugs, it's very easy to tell what you're going to get. But bugs, you have to be a little bit more careful. You might have noticed if you played Animal Crossing, uh, like normal Animal Crossing, I would call it, um, the fish are a bit harder to catch. You just kind of toss the lure in front of them, and you just tap after the, the exclamation point. It's a bit easier. Uh, is this ever going to load? Um, bugs are also much easier in this. So to catch a bug, you don't have to sneak up to the bug. You just tap the bug once it's on screen. Wait for the thing. Boop. You got it. So you don't have to carefully position. In fact, if you try to, like, skedaddle right up next to them all stealthily, you will actually scare it away. So don't do that. Um, yeah, the fruit bugs are always on the trees. Um, Horn Dynastid is the rare bug, and that will also be on the trees. There's also three species of butterfly. This is the tiger something. There's the monarch butterfly, which is another common one. And there's the, um, emperor butterfly or something? That's a blue one. That's a rare one that you sell for bells. Um, there's also, uh, another beetle on trees that's rare. If it has two jaws, um, it's like a, or like two horn things. I think they're jaws, not horns. If it's got two things on its face, and it's brown, that is the ultra-rare one. And if it's got one horn, that's the rare one. It'll it'll make more sense when you, when you see the bugs yourself. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the these areas. 
they respawn, like I said, it's hard to tell exactly how many, how often they respawn, the bugs and everything. Uh, it's a few minutes. If you check, maybe every half hour, these places will be full. So if you really want to stock up, um, maybe wait 15 minutes to a half hour, and then go to each of the different places. Uh, not the fruit, obviously. The fruit has a specified timer. But uh, the seashells, the fish, and the bugs kind of have this invisible timer, and once you catch all of them in an area, they'll start to repopulate slowly, but it, it is kind of grindy if you just try to go get them one by one. So I like to keep about 10 of each normal thing, like I like to keep 10 of the butterflies and the bugs and the fish. Um, I tr keep as many of the fruit as I can, because I kind of always find myself running out of fruit. Uh, coconuts, like I said, coconuts and Seashells, you don't really need to keep a lot of. I keep just like three. Um, those are very, very easy to acquire more of. Like I said, you can just shake the coconut trees and just leave the coconuts on the ground and like get them later or um, you can just sell them. If you didn't know, you can go to the collected items inventory and just sell things. Like uh, this coral, I'm never gonna use, so just sell. You can just like four of that. Um, you can also put it in the market box, but you gotta sell stuff in the market bots that people will actually buy. Like, people will buy this yellow perch, hopefully. Um, but seashells is a bit rarer. And, um... Yeah, I've had bad luck selling the rare items. Like, they're not really that rare. So, yeah. Um... That is pretty much it. Oh, right, I can show you what the things look like. So, yeah, that's the horn dynastid right there. The, uh, the brown thing. And, um... That's the sea bass, or the black bass. Sea bass is different. And that's the red snapper. So the game will let you know when you get a rare one too, so. Um, it won't specify between rare and like super rare though. That's just a term I made up because they're different even though the game doesn't call them different things. But yeah, that's pretty much how the recreation areas go. You can also summon um, an animal with a calling card to a recreation area. Um, to use calling cards, you have to go to a recreation area, and then you call them. Oh, she's busy. Um, she's at another area, I mean. Yeah, you can call them. I'm not going to call them just because these are, these are like limited premium resource. Um, it's not really a big deal if you want to just use them. But I tend to use those um, in the mid-game when you're really limited by common crafting materials is when I use the request tickets and the calling cards. Um, you can only do up to three requests in each uh, three hour reset period. But if you use a calling card, you can use up to two, I think, calling cards. Maybe it's three, two or three. And then you get another set of three for each calling or request ticket you use. And if you get a calling card, they'll just visit an area like on demand. But those aren't really important. Um, as you might've noticed here, um, eventually you get so many common crafting materials, it doesn't really matter. Uh, long term, you're more limited by these essences. But uh, that's a topic for another video. That's pretty much all you need to know about these uh, recreation areas. Hope that helps.